Hi everyone, today you're going to start a new unit of measurement called area. So we're moved away from clocks a little bit and now we're going to figure out this word area. So when you think of area, you think of a space. And this word area in math means that we're thinking of a measurement to see how much it takes to cover a surface. All right, now in real life, some kind of measurements where we'd want to measure the area would be maybe if you are making a cover for your pool and you need the cover to cover the whole area of the pool, then you would be measuring how much space your pool takes up and make sure that that cover fits over the entire area. All right, another example would be if we're putting tiles on a floor or carpet on a floor, we'd want to measure the area of the floor to make sure that we cover it properly and that all your covering fits perfectly or even the cover of a sandbox. So these are times in real life where we'd be measuring area. Now for you, when you're starting to first measure area, we're going to use non-standard units. And we've talked about that before in measuring. It just means that we're not using the same kind of measurements a grown-up would use. We're using uh, some units that are meant for younger children. So we're going to be using these cubes to measure area. And we know that in real life, if people were measuring to cover a floor or a, do a pool cover, they wouldn't be using linking cubes. So that's why we call these non-standard units and we use non-standard units when we're learning. All right, so I have a little figure here and what I want to do is I wanna cover the area of that figure. So I'm gonna be using linking cubes. Now, the biggest rule when you cover a surface like this to find the area is that your units must all be the same size. So you can see here that I have two different sizes of linking cubes. So if I start to cover this, I cannot switch to a different sized unit. If I'm going to use the big linking cubes, then I'm, I'm gonna to have to use that same size for the whole thing. So I'm actually going to get rid of these small ones because they're not the same size. Now, rule number two, when you are covering an area is you want to make sure that you don't have any spaces. So we want, we don't, we want to make sure that we're pushing those tightly together, fitting exactly side by side. Okay. So make sure there are no spaces when you're filling in your linking cubes. Now my linking cubes are 3D, but you'll be using paper cubes that I've um, that you've printed off and are cutting up and you can paste them right onto your page if you want. You can glue them in or not glue them in, that's up to you. But another thing you have to be careful with when you're using flat pieces to cover is that you don't overlap them. Now these are not easy to overlap because I can't really make them go one on top of the other without snapping them together. But when you're using papers to cover, you might overlap them a bit. So make sure no overlapping, no spaces, and that we cover this completely. So let's have a look here. So far I've used three linking cubes and I'm gonna continue covering my figure. And there we go, my figure is all covered in, everything's fitting nicely, no spaces and there's no room for any more, so that'll be how much my area is. So then we're going to count to see what the area is. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the area of this figure is six units, okay? Or you can say six cubes, whatever you're using, all right? So today you're just going to be using linking cubes or in your case, if you don't have linking cubes at home, then you're cutting out the pictures of the cubes that I sent you. Now you'll be also moving on to other ways to cover um, an area. So for example, if I want to cover the, this cover of this notebook, then I can use something different. Linking cubes are a little small. It would take me a lot of linking cubes to cover that front of that notebook. So instead, I'm going to use post-it notes. And they're good too, because they're all the same size and I can put them down to cover everything and I just do it the same way. Now, 
they may not fit perfectly, but you just try and do the best that you can. It's okay if there's little, little gaps as you cover because sometimes we can't get them to fit quite properly. Okay, so we can see that this is not an actual measurement because I've got some um, spaces that aren't covered, but we can say that it is about one, two, three, four, five, six sticky notes. The area is about six sticky notes to cover the cover of this book. All right, and you might use other objects like cue cards or sometimes when we're in class and we're using pattern blocks to cover a figure, those are all ways to cover the area. Whenever you're filling something in with no gaps, that's how we cover an area. So have fun working with area today. Be really careful with your cutting to make sure that we cut out those linking cubes as best we can and try and fit them in nicely, just like you're doing a puzzle. So I think you'll have lots of fun with this unit. See you next time.